Hey what's up folks today we are going to build a retrieval augmented generation application aka rag with large language models so this application is going to be 100% local completely offline where you can upload all your private documents and have question answering capabilities using large language models so let's see the demo of the application so for document upload we have this section where we can upload our document and for this video i've chosen the ai practitioner exam guide from aws i'm going to upload this document here i'm going to process this this is going to add our documents into the vector store, which we can query from the application. So once we have added the data to the vector store, we can ask a question related to the document. So to put the document into perspective, it has all of these different sections. And for this example, I'm just going to copy this. Uh, what is the target candidate description? So I'm going to write it here. And I'm going to ask this question. So it's going to fetch the relevant data from the vector store and it's going to pass it to the large language model producing this answer. And we also have some metadata related to different chunks that were brought back. If I ask this application any other question that is unrelated to the document, then it's just going to answer. It does not have context about it. So we are making sure that our LLM is grounded and it can just answer questions based on the documents we have uploaded on our system. So before we get started, let's make sure you have Olama downloaded on your machine. So we are going to use Olama for inference. You can download it for whatever platform you're using right now. And once you have downloaded Olama, then you are going to download Llama 3.2. And for this particular demonstration, we are going to use the 3 billion parameter model. And we are also going to need an embedding model. And for this, we are going to use Nomic Embed Text 1.5, which we will use for embedding our documents and storing it onto the vector database. So make sure you copy this and come to your terminal and paste it so that you can pull both the Nomic Embed Text as well as the Llama 3 on your machine. So now I'm in my application directory. Let's install all of our dependencies. For this, we are going to use Olama for local reference. For vector database, we are going to use ChromaDB. We are also going to need sentence transformers because later on in the video, we are going to perform re-ranking where we do multi-step retrieval so that we get the most relevant documents out of the vector store and we get a relevant answer back to the user. So for the user interface, we are going to use Streamlet. So for PDF, I'm going to use uh, PyMu PDF and I'm going to use Langchain Community for some of the handy utilities that the Langchain provides. This demo will try to avoid as much as of Langchain abstraction as it can. So we are just going to use two or three abstractions from Langchain and that's going to be it. But for the rest, we are going to do it by using the core SDK itself. So let's install them. Once all of this is installed, I'm going to open my code editor. Here I've created a file called app.py. So first of all, I'm going to import Streamlit as ST. Next, I'm going to create a sidebar where we are going to set a document uploading area. I'm going to set the page title as rag question answer. I'm going to create a header called question answer. And then with Streamlit, I'm going to create a file upload section where we can drag and drop files. For now, we are just supporting a PDF file and we are not allowing multiple files to be uploaded at once because this demo is just for a single file. If you want, you can try doing this with multiple files. But for this demo, we are just going to stick with one file. And then we are going to add a process button. So whenever we press this process button, it's going to take the document that's being uploaded and it's going to chunk it and then store it on the vector database. So I'm going to run this application and see how this looks like. So this is how our application looks like now. We can upload our documents. And when we click process, it should be processing it. But right now nothing happens. So let's get back to the code. Now that we have a section to upload the document, let's add some import that will help us process the documents. So I have all of these imports. Next, I'm going to create a function that will help us process the document that is being uploaded. So I'm going to create a function called process document. It's going to take a uploaded file from Streamlet and it's going to return a list of documents, which is a Langchain abstraction. So whatever document is uploaded by the user, it is in the form of bytes IO. So that's why we are going to save the uploaded document into a temporary file. So that's why we have the permission of writing bytes. We have the suffix of the uh, file name as .pdf, and then we are going to delete it manually. So that's why we have delete equals to false. So we are going to write the contents of the file that was uploaded into our temporary file. Then we are going to use the PDF loader to load the file from the temporary location. And after we have loaded the files then we are going to delete the temporary file because we no longer need it and the file is on the memory of the program next we are going to use something called recursive character text splitter as you can see on our pdf document the document consists of paragraphs lines sentences it has a mix of different text formats here and we want to create chunks of this document so that it is easily digestible by the embedding model our large language model and later on the re-ranker as well so for this, we are going to use recursive character text splitter. Uh, it is going to take a chunk size of 400 and chunk overlap of 100. 
So chunk size basically means how many characters do we want to split our documents with. So let's say we have a document of 10 pages. So we are going to create chunk size of 400 characters until we reach the end of the document. And we are going to create overlap of 100 because we want a semantic meaning between all of these chunks. So let's say the 400 character chunk that we just created might end abruptly with a comma or on the middle of the sentence. Then we need another chunk that has some of the contents from the previous chunk so that we can have semantic meaning between those two chunks. And there are different methods of separating the chunks. So if we look into this class itself, it separates the characters based on paragraph and then new line space and then empty string but since we want more accurate sentences when we pass the document to the embedding model so we are going to do based on paragraph based on new lines full stop because we want complete sentences question mark because we want complete questions exclamation mark because we want complete statements and followed by space and an empty string so that we get proper sentences when we are splitting it once we have this in place we can then use the text splitter and split the documents so it's going to create a list of document so if we look at the document, it has like page content, which is going to be the text uh, that is around 400 characters. And then some of the metadata, which includes the location where the file is, title, uh, what PDF version it's using and a lot of different other things. Once we have this in place, let's add a code block that allows us to run this program. And I'm going to refactor it a bit. So I'm going to pull the sidebar from here and put it inside of this block need some indentation so once we have the uploaded file and once we click on the process button we are going to proceed to process our document which basically means splitting our document on a chunk size of 400 characters based on all of these separators and getting the output once we split the document we can also see what kind of splits are being created so we can do st.write and all splits so that we can see the splits on our ui this process button needs to be inside of the sidebar now let's refresh it okay we have the upload area we are going to upload the same document again and we are going to click on process so let's see what kind of chunks it has created as you can see we have this document abstraction from langchain it has the metadata argument with source showcasing where my file is currently located and then it has the pdf format author as you can see the real text of our document is inside of the page content and if we take a look at this if we copy this and we put it on an application like character counter it is going to show that we have around 348 characters for this if we take another chunk inside of page content it's going to be 391 so it's not going to be 400 exact but it's close to that number and it's also trying to chunk based on the separator so the number of characters might vary and all in all we have around 78 that means like 79 chunks of text created from this one pdf file so we are going to take all of these chunks and we are going to store it on the vector database so for vector database, I'm going to import some of the utilities. Um, like I mentioned, we are going to use Chroma DB and for embedding, we are going to use Olama embedding function. So that's why I have it here. Let me collapse this function and I'm going to create another function called get vector collection. So this is going to create a vector database client along with a collection that we can work with. First of all, before we ingest any data into vector database, we need to convert them into vector embeddings. And for that, we are going to use Olama. And by default, if you have Olama installed on your computer, it has a server running on this port and it has this endpoint called API slash embedding where we can send our text to be converted into embeddings. And for the model, I'm going to use Nomic embed text model. If you have not downloaded it, download it now using Olama pool. So we are using Nomic embed text model in this context because it has a very large context window. So we can pass in a lot of text data into it. It also has high dimensions. It has around 768 dimensions, which means that the semantic meaning generated from this model for embeddings is going to be quite nice. And because we are using Chroma database, we are going to need this helper class so that we can use Olama as an embedding function. So we are going to create a Chroma persistent client, which basically means that we want to persist the data on our local disks instead of memory. So if you just create a client instead of persistent client it's just going to store all of these vector embeddings into the memory but we are going to create a directory on our local path called demo rack chroma so it's going to store all the vector embeddings into it uh, it uses sqlite by default but you can also choose doc tv and other database backends for this so it's pretty handy next we are going to create a chroma client collection so collection in terms of vector database is kind of like tables on relational databases so we are trying to create a table with the name rag app 
and it's going to use the embedding function that we defined early on so on chroma database for each collection you can have your own retrieval function so for this we are using cosine so we are using cosine in this case because we are concerned more about the semantic meaning that the vector embeddings provide than the magnitude of it so cosine works best for this use case but you can experiment with euclidean or l2 and you can also use dot product function for this so let's say i have this rag app collection but you can have a different collection for let's say research papers and you can use dot product there because the retrieval function of dot product works better for your use case or how you have set up your application so it entirely depends so once we do vector embeddings on the vector database the data on the collection looks something like this so we have embedded some of the words like wolf dog cat and if we query kitten then it's going to be very similar to cat instead of dog or wolf so this is not related to fruits so it's not going to be on that dimension at all this is just a basic overview of how data is stored on the vector database now that we have the vector database let's go and create a function that will store our data or document inside the vector collection so for this we are going to create a function called add to vector collection which is going to take all the splits generated by our text splitter in the process document and then we are also taking the file name here so for this we are getting the vector collection because we are going to work on a single collection at a time and i have these variables which represents empty list which i'm going to fill in later on this loop so for all the splits that were created from the text splitter i'm going to take the page content which is the text from our pdf so if we look back into our application we can see that each document has page content and some metadata to it source metadata so we are basically taking those data and putting it onto our list. So first of all, we are putting page content inside of the documents list. And then we are taking metadata and putting it into the metadata list. And for each document or split that we are going to save on the vector database, it's going to need a unique identification or unique ID, which is going to be generated based on the file name. So we are just going to take the file name and whatever iteration it's running on, we are just going to add that iteration number here. So once we have all of these data inside of these variables, we are ready to upload our data into the vector database. We are going to use collection.observed because if the data already exists, it's going to update the data. And if the data does not exist, it's going to create the data. Let's say if we have additional IDs here because we updated the PDF and we want to add it to the vector database again. So based on those IDs, it's going to populate the vector database again and create the index. Once we have uploaded the data to the vector database, we are going to show a toast message saying data added to the vector store. With this in place, we are processing our document, we get our vector database, and we also have a function to store our documents inside of the vector database. So let's come down here, let's update it a bit. So here I've added a variable which represents a normalized uploaded file name. So our file name can have dashes, uh, full stops, or empty spaces in the name, which we are going to convert into underscore. And then we are going to split all the documents, and then we are going to import embed it and add it to the vector database so let's see this in action as you can see on the right side i do not have any vector databases yet once i upload some documents i'm going to see some vector database again i'm going to upload the same documentation and then i'm going to press on process and it's going to say that data has been added to the vector store now that the data is added we can see a directory called demo rack chroma so if we look inside of it and if we look into chroma.sqlite3 so it's using sqlite as its backend right now I'm going to go into this embedding table and I'm going to see that all of the embedding ID are represented with the file name followed by the iteration it took on the earlier function. So my file name has been normalized. All the spaces, dashes has been converted into underscores. So as we saw earlier, we had 70 something chunks, which is true here as well. And we have all of these other metadata that you can explore. It also shows what text we have stored in our vector database. So all of these are represented by the embeddings here, by these IDs. So now we have completed the first half of our application, which is pushing the data into the vector database. And now we are going to retrieve the data from the database. I made a mistake here. I'm going to delete this and I'm going to de-indent this. I'm going to move everything inside of the sidebar because the document processing occurs inside of the sidebar. And for retrieval, we are going to need a form area where we can ask the questions. And we are going to need a button to initiate the retrieval process. Once we have that in place, let's take this header and put it on top of here as well. So if we go back to our application and refresh, so we have this rack question answer coming in here. We have this separate area for the sidebar where we can drop the documents or we can upload it. And then we have this section to ask questions. Now let's create a function to process the query. So we have created a function called query collection, which is going to take the prompt from the user and the number of results it's going to return. So we are again going to take the vector collection 
because we want to perform the query on the same collection where we added the documents earlier and it's very important that we use the same embedding function there so that's why this function comes really handy because it has the same embedding function and it returns the same collection with all the required arguments so once we have the collection in place we are going to query the collection we are querying using query text but here you can also use embeddings directly but for the ease of use we are just going to use query text and the number of results that we are going to return from the vector database is going to be 10 so it's going to return 10 documents and we are just going to return the results so if we come here we can add a conditional statement if we have the ax button pressed and if we have prompt from the user then we are going to query the collection with the prompt passed by the user and then we are just going to write the data to our ui just to see what kind of data is being returned from the vector database so let's see this in action so i'm going to open our document again and i'm going to ask what are the fundamentals of ai and ml so what are the fundamentals of ai and ml so it's going to query the vector database and as you can see it returned 10 relevant documents and all of these documents have their embedding id as well representing which text it's returning from the database so the embedding id with six contains these contains so the vector database is using cosine function to return all of these data based on their semantic meaning so once we have this data returned from the vector database we are going to push this data into the large language model and then generate a proper response for the user so let's get to it so for using large language model, we are going to need a system prompt where we are going to ground the large language model. So grounding basically means that we do not let large language model answer any questions that is not within the context that we provide. So the context that we provide to the large language models is going to be the documents returned from the vector database. We want to do this because we always want relevant information from our internal sources or the private documents that we upload to the application. So it's basically instructing provide answers based on the context. If the context does not contain sufficient information, just clearly state that in your response and all of these other stuff, you can find it on the code repository linked below. So now we have system prompt in place. Now we are going to create a LLM function that's going to call the large language model and generate the final answer for this we are going to import olama so import olama if we look into this function it's going to take context as its parameter as well as the prompt from the user so we are going to use the chat method from the olama sdk and we are going to use the llama 3.23 billion parameter models on my testing this model is both lightweight and the results returned by it is pretty good we are going to enable streaming because I don't want the user to wait for the whole answers to come up. And then we are going to pass the message or the chat history to the large language model. So for this, we are going to create roles. So the first role is going to be system uh, where we are passing the system prompt as the content. And the second is role of a user where we are passing context and the question. So if we take a look into our prompt, we have stated that context will be passed as context and user question will be passed as question. So following that format, we are passing the data accordingly. And since we are streaming the response, we are creating a generator function using yield. So whenever we are streaming response from Olama, it comes in chunks. So we are looping through all of those chunks and we are checking if the chunk is done. If the chunk done is true, it means that the large language models has completed generating the answer. If it's still false, that means it's still generating the answer. So since it's still generating the answer, the answer is inside of the dictionary which is message and content so which we are yielding back to whatever function that's calling this generator function and if the chunk response as done as true then we are going to break this loop and just say that the large language model has completed generating the answer once this is done we can now pass the documents retrieved from the vector database inside of the large language model so i'm going to update it here so once we complete the query collection we are going to get dictionary as our return object so we are going to get the documents key on the dictionary which is a nested list and from there we are going to take the first index so if we look into our application ui we can see that all of this is a dictionary and there is a documents key and it is a list and inside of it there is another list so this is a nested list and we are getting the zeroth index of that list where we get all of these data so that's what we are doing here so once we get all of these documents we are then calling the large language model with context as the retrieved document text and then the prompt as whatever we typed on our ui since we want to stream our response that's why we have write stream from streamlit and this is a generator function so this is going to generate one word at a time or a couple of words at a time so that we have this cool streaming effect on our ui so once this is done we have successfully completed the first phase of our application now let's see this in action since i've already added my document to the vector store i don't need to add it again and again so it's already there so i'm just going to minimize it for now so i'm going to ask the question based on the document so i'm again going to ask what are the fundamentals of ai and ml 
So right now my application is going to search on the vector store, get the relevant documents back, pass it to the large language model and generate an answer. That is completely grounded to the document that we have uploaded early on. As you can see, it has provided a pretty detailed answer and it has also referred to the sections on the document like task statement 1.1 and it also says that fundamentals cover 20% of the exam questions. So it has all of these details generated from our private document using a local large language model. So this is a single step retrieval in terms of retrieval augmented generation, but we can make the retrieve data more relevant by using a method called re-ranking where we are going to use cross encoders. So we are going to take all of the retrieve documents from the vector database and we are going to push it inside of the cross encoders. Cross encoder will take the question and then pair of all the documents and it's going to compare which one of the document is more relevant to the question being asked and it's going to add a score to all of the documents. So it's going to create more accurate answers for the questions we are asking. So let's see that in action. For this we are going to need the sentence transformers library and cross encoder class from it. And then we are going to create a function to perform the re-ranking. So I have this re-rank cross encoders function which takes a list of document which is a list of strings and then it's going to return a tuple of string as well as a list of integer. So I have these two variables defined here. So relevant text is going to be a text corpus where all the text from the relevant documents are going to be combined as a single string and we are also going to take the relevant IDs from the documents based on the ranking. Here we are defining our cross encoder instance which is going to be ms macro mini lm l6 v2. So this has a context window of around 500 tokens. And then from this encoder model, we are going to rank all of the documents based on the prompt we provide to it. And we are going to get the top three results based on the ranking. So once we get the ranks, we are going to loop through it and then get the relevant index so that we can get the relevant text from the document that we have passed here. And then whatever relevant ID is there, we are going to append it to this empty list. And then we are going to return relevant text as a single text corpus and then we are going to return the relevant IDs as well. We are going to see how the ranks look as well. So we are going to do st.write and ranks so that we can get an idea of what we are doing here. So once we have the re-ranker in place, I'm going to come down and after getting the results, I'm going to pass it to the re-ranker. So I have relevant text and relevant text IDs as a return variables and then I'm passing the context to the re-rank cross encoders. And once all the documents are ranked based on their relevance, I'm going to use that relevance text as a context for my large language model so that only relevant text is passed. So based on the document, I'm going to ask what are the application of foundational models. I'm going to ask the question. We are also going to see what ranks mean. As you can see, this is the ranks generated by the cross encoder re-ranking and this is the message generated by the large language models. As you can see, it generates the top three ranking documents. So the corpus ID 0, corpus ID 7, corpus ID 5. It basically means that the embedding ID 0, 7 and 5 are the ones with the most relevant to the question that I'm asking. And it also puts a score to it. So 8.6, 5.7 and 3.4. Let me show you the corpus text as well. So along with the ranks, I'm also going to write the relevant text on the UI. And I'm going to add a divider as well, just so we have this clean separation between our debugging statements and the real answer from the large language models. So I'm going to ask the same question again. And as you can see, we have this re-ranking metadata and then we have this corpus that we are sending to our large language models to generate the final answer. So as you can see, it has exactly taken the application of foundational models from statement 3.1 which is the case in our document and then it's generating answers based on that so we perform cross encoders re-ranking to get more relevant answers i am going to delete these debug statements and at the end of the application i'm going to add some expanders to see see retrieve documents and see most relevant ids so this will basically show the metadata of what documents are being retrieved from the vector database and what kind of relevant IDs and relevant text that we are fetching based on cross encoder re-ranking. So I'm going to ask another question to this, which is going to be related to guidelines for responsible AI. So what are the guidelines for responsible AI? As you can see, I'm just asking what question, but you can also ask why question or where question, uh, things like that. So this is the response that large language model is generating. And we can also see as a first phase what relevant documents it queried from the vector database. And after re-ranking what kind of text corpus we generated and which documents were more relevant out of all the 10 that were retrieved from the vector database. 
So we just have one document in our system, but we can add another one as well. So I have this CKS curriculum, which I'm going to add and process. So this is added to the vector store. And if I go into my code editor and look at the database now, go to embeddings, let's minimize this. I'm also going to see the embeddings ID related to my CKS curriculum as well. So it has generated 12 documents or 12 embedding IDs for it. Let me open this document. So I'm just going to ask what falls under cluster setup. So I'm going to go to my application what falls under cluster setup. And I'm going to ask the question. So since we are searching based on semantic meaning, the vector database is smart enough to know that I'm asking question related to cluster setup because it only appears on the CKS curriculum. And it's also saying that based on the CKS curriculum, it has given me all of these details and we can again see the retrieve documents. I think some of the semantic meanings from this question matched with some of the documents in AWS AI certification as well. But as you can see, when we performed re-ranking, it only took documents 0, 06 and 1. 0, 06 and 1, which are all based on CKS curriculum. So that's it for this video. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up. If you want to see similar content in the future, subscribe to my channel. If you have any queries, comment, write them down in the comment section below and I'll see you in the next one.